Um, for our Vita Vegan Con, I'm Janessa. I'm Michelle. Hello, I'm Jess. Uh, we've been doing a series of hangouts with our speakers for Vita, v Vita Vegan Con 3. Um, and today we're very excited to have Neil go. Her class um, at Vita Vegan Con is going is called Exploits of a Vegan Panor, Experiences and Lessons Learned Through Growing Multiple Vegan Businesses. So she is a master of vegan business, and she's done many amazing ones. So we're really excited to have her and her expertise here with us. Good morning, Yoko. Hi, Yoko. Good morning. Good morning, Hello. ladies. How are you? Good. How are you? I am doing uh, splendidly on this beautiful Saturday morning. It's a little bit cloudy here in San Fran uh, in the Bay Area, but otherwise, yeah. I hear a lot of um, sort of I don't know funny sounds. Is, is the audio okay? <laughs> we'll pretend that I'll fix it later. <laughs> this is about as far as we get. But we want to, of course, thank you for joining us, Miyoko, and thank you for joining us at our third, uh, at our third V to Vegan Con next month. We know you probably had some busy times going on, and we, we truly want to know how is life after Expo West? Well, life after Expo West, the following week I was in Seattle for a veg fest up there. Um, later on this year, we're, I'm going on another vegan cruise um, to Alaska. And so I was up there sampling cheese, doing cooking demos, and promoting the cruise. So that was fun. And then, the, and then the week after that, I got home. I had two days, and I was off to, uh, to Marshall, Texas for Health Fest. Oh, right. So there was about a month and a half where I was traveling. I think I had one weekend where I wasn't traveling. It was exhausting. So I'm now here back in the Bay Area for the next six weeks until uh, Vita Vegan Con. Actually, it's not even six weeks away anymore, is it? So, um, yeah, it's been really, really busy. <laughs> well, how is, how is life back home treating you? It's great. You know, I have no complaints. I feel very blessed uh, with my life right now. Um, just all the wonderful things that are going on. Um, you know, I'm kind of old school, so I feel like I paid my dues, and I'll, I'll talk about that at the uh, uh, during my talk. But you know, it's just it's wonderful. I love doing what I'm doing, promoting veganism and the cheeses, and um, it's great. Awesome, that's great. You definitely have paid your dues. You've been doing a lot. Um, <laughs> For a while, you've been doing a lot of exciting new things to help bring veganism to the scope of more and more people, and that's incredible. There's a there's a sense of urgency, really. I mean, I just feel like the other day, um, you guys know about Moofree. That's the um, the company called. There's a company called. Mo you know, there's this two prong approach to promoting vegan foods. There's the real food approach, which is what most of us are doing in the culinary world, and then there's the biotech approach. Where they're sort of bioengineering foods. And there's a company called Moofree that's making. They're, what they're doing is copying cow DNA and then replicating it in a lab and making plant-based milk that is engineered, basically. I know, and that sounds really great for a lot of people. But they're what they're doing is they're promoting it to you know to craft and these big companies that could opt for that as a cheaper alternative to dairy milk. Thereby saving, you know, millions and millions of cows and global warming and all of that. And these guys were saying they just felt like there's a sense of urgency, like we really had to do something now because it's, you know, we really don't have a whole lot longer left on this planet if we don't do something now for ourselves, for the animals, for, for to reverse global warming. And so it's just, it's just so it's paramount that we all do something to promote veganism. Yeah, that's inspiring. That's inspiring to hear you talk about it and an inspiring concept as well. Vegans have a vision and vegans are smarter. Very well, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, we want to ask you, in your downtime, we know you um, certainly have published you know, some wonderful cookbooks that are out there from the Now and Zen Epicure to Artisan Vegan Cheese to your upcoming one this June, The Homemade Vegan Pantry. We want to know, what inspires you? Where do you come up with your ideas? I, <laughs> it's just funny. I think I'm going through a very uninspired period right now. If you know, um, if I have to go into the kitchen and cook anything, it's like, oh my god, what am I going to make? I have no idea. 
like, I've gone through periods in my life when I have a million ideas and I wake up at 3 a.m. and it's like, oh my God, I could make this. And then I go through periods of my life when it's just an utter chore and I, you know, it's like, I can't, I look at my refrigerator and I can't figure out what to make for dinner. So what do just, you do then? What do I do? You know, I, I, there's just a bunch of old standbys, basically brown rice and stir fried veggies. So, um, you know, Japanese, I eat a lot of Japanese food. So, you know, I think it's, there's definitely places where I draw inspiration. A lot of it used to be years ago. I used to eat out a lot, a lot more than I do now. And I would just go and observe. I go to omnivore restaurants and I try to get something vegan. I would look at what other people were eating and I would be inspired just by the visuals or the idea of what was being served, even if I didn't eat it. It, it sort of got to a point where I just really didn't enjoy going to those restaurants anymore because they were just, you know, I got tired of eating my pasta or my polenta or my grilled veggies and paying, you know, 50 bucks or whatever. And also just sort of supporting this, I don't know, there's so many omnivores chefs that just have this attitude, you know, this highbrow, this sort of, they have this scoffing attitude towards vegans. And I know there are more and more that are opening up to it, but there are just as many that are very set in their ways. And it just got to a point where I, you know, I was like, I just didn't want to go and support these places. Um, if, you know, if they're offering something, I, I went through a, a project one time where I pretended, um, I just called up a bunch of vegan up, up restaurants in San Francisco, not vegan. And I asked about, it was about Meatless Monday, and San Francisco passed this ordinance trying to get restaurants all to serve a vegan option on Meatless Monday. Um, right. This is about 10 years ago, so it was great. And so I pretended I was just, you know, I just called up all these restaurants, and I was like, oh, you know, I just found out about this ordinance, and I just want to know if you have a vegan option for Meatless Monday. And I was just <laughs> laughed at most of the time. And people were like, are you kidding me? Why would we do that? And I just got really frustrated. And I got to a point where it's like, I, I don't even want to go. And so I kind of stopped eating out. And when I stopped doing that, at some point, you know, to some degree, I lost that sort of visual inspiration, mm -hmm. uh, which was sort of unfortunate. But, and, um, but then at the round, 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 right around the same time, so many vegan chefs started coming to the horizon, you know, coming on the horizon with all of their creativity. Um, and it's so much more fun to draw inspiration from from that. I mean, what about the aquafaba movement right now? You know, the, the chickpea water meringue thing that's going yeah, on right now. That's that's just, incredible. I mean, that is just like so inspirational. And I really, I have, you know, I just, I mean, I don't even cook anymore because I'm so busy. But one day I just have to open up a can. I went out and literally bought a can of chickpeas just so I could open it up and see if it whipped up. Um, I really didn't do it. So intrigued. Yeah, I hear that a hand blender is just as good. So. <laughs> the what? What is just as good? Oh, I, I was just reading last night. My my KitchenAid mixer is broken, but then I read someone on, on a PBK saying that a hand blender is even is just as good for the recipe, that they got the same amazing results. Isn't that amazing? You know, and I, I'm actually kind of in, in, embarrassed because my upcoming cookbook, The Homemade Vegan Pantry, has this recipe for flaxseed meringue that I developed like 30 years ago, and it's and I thought, oh wow, you know, I'm going to introduce this this meringue to the to the to the world, and then it's, it's, such a fuss, it's a fussy meringue, and I admit it, you know, it's like you have to do all this stuff to it, and it's a big, and all you have to do is open a can of chickpeas. I mean, it's so easy, it's so brilliant, you know, it's it's just so exciting. There's like nothing that can't be done anymore. So, that's true. It's amazing to think that, you know, as you were saying, a lot of uh, traditional omnivore chefs can be resistant to exploring vegan food. But when we do, there's so many amazing, amazing things that can happen. You can use chickpea brine for meringue. I mean, it's incredible the amount of different things we can do in the kitchen with just plants and vegetables. Oh, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. Yeah. You can do everything. Yeah. Well, let's get real again, Miyoko. What have you found that you cannot veganize to your standards? What have I found that I can't veganize to yes. my standards? Um, you know, I have, hmm, that's a hard question. I, I don't think that was in the list. You know, what I could say, um, 
God, that's hard. Um, you know, uh, you you know, there, have been things that, there have been things that I struggled with. Um, you know, I struggled with eclairs, with shoe pastry for a long time, and I finally got that to work um, to my satisfaction. Um, you know, I guess in terms of, I guess the question, the way I would phrase it is, what can't I veganize to my satisfaction that's a whole food plant-based mm. item? Because, for example, there's a lot of very satisfying meat alternatives, but most of them are either made out of soy protein, isolates, uh, which are, you know, it's, or, or, Satan, gluten, which, you know, I love, but if there's a way to make that really full of fiber and that was really healthy out of just perhaps legumes, um, and I think soy curls might come the closest to it, but that's mm -hmm. also not quite there. Mm -hmm. So, but otherwise, you know, I think there's a, if you're willing to eat soy or gluten, then I think you pretty much have it all covered. I can't think of anything, really. Um, I know that's yeah, strange. They just come out with their um, chickpea seitan, which is really good. We had it, um, Jess and I tried it at Texas Veg Fest last weekend. So the chickpea seitan is now fantastic. Wow, I'm excited to try that. Yeah, that's, and they're also yeah. doing the jackfruit now. So I guess jackfruit is another one. Jackfruit is very popular. Yeah, Upton's came up with a jackfruit um, or pulled pork. I had that at Expo West. That was Hello. really, really cool. Yeah, that was great. It was great. And, uh, you know, if you open up a jackfruit, I mean, you can have both the fruit inside and then all the hairy things that you can turn into that. So um, you guys get jackfruit where you are? Are you guys in Portland or are you into Austin? Mm -hmm. We're in Portland, and um, a lot of the um, Asian grocery supply stores carry yeah. like canned frying young jackfruit. I don't think. Yeah, it's, you know, it's not there's a. Not here. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. You know, I'm I've been very very fond of French cuisine. Um, mm. Not on a regular basis, but if I want to eat a very very special dinner, then it's sort of long. Those. Uh, routes, but you know, I just can't think of anything right now. There's just some amazing things being done with vegan food. Um, Inspiring. Yeah, I think I think anything is possible. There's absolutely no deprivation whatsoever. Cool. I agree. That's And you've explored vegan foods in so many different ways. I mean, we've seen cookbooks from you, you know, you're on the TV show, Vegan Mashup. Um, now you've got You've had a few companies, you know, now you've got Miyoko's Kitchen with the cheeses. Um, with this much, you know, this many different sort of, not tangents, but forays into vegan business and reaching people in different ways with veganism. Um, really, we want to talk about your class and, you know, how you're bringing all of this um, to your class, what you can share, because there are so many of us who, you know, we're not going to do eight different things. Like we don't have that in us. <laughs> you know, we thank you for everything that you've done. Um, but so many people are ready to do their part to, you know, turn their their passion of veganism into, you know, a business in some way. So, what can we expect from your class? And may I ask? Thank you for embracing veganpreneur. <laughs> That's not a very good question. It's <laughs> I'm looking forward to a vegan economy. I feel like that is really the direction the world has to go. And the purpose of my class really is to inspire people uh, in order to uh, to really take that path. And the path can be arduous, it can be hard. I started at a time in the 1980s when I had my first vegan business when, you know, no one even knew what the word was, and no one knew what, why I was making the food I was making, and, and um, you know, from the restaurants that I've had and the food businesses and everything else that I've done and seen veganism grow, um, you know, I've had my share of challenges, and I know anybody who goes into business is going to have their share of challenges. And it's all too easy to just sort of throw in the rope or the towel because it's just too hard. 
And really, what, by sharing my journey and what I've gone through and the lessons that I've learned, I'm really hoping to inspire people to take that path and to pursue something that they believe in, something that they're passionate about, something that will save the world. Because I really feel that this is the direction that we have to go. We have to create a vegan economy. And only vegan printers can do that. And what a relief it has to be that the vegan market is so much larger today than when you started. I mean, again, you know, people didn't know the word back then. Um, but, you know, at least everybody has that friend who went vegan for a while. Like, people at least know the word now. Like, that's they do. so exciting. Yeah, what and it makes it easy. you to go vegan, Miyoko? I'm sorry? What inspired you to go vegan? Oh, you know, I've been a vegetarian since I was 12, and I was in uh, Japan in the 1980s. And um, I had gotten to a point where it was so hard to live in Japan and be a vegetarian. You know, there's no support system or anything. So I had started to eat fish again. And one day, I realized what I was doing, and I was like, oh, my God, what am I doing? Why, why have I gotten to this point where I've compromised my values and I'm eating animals again? Um, and I just decided at that point, you know, not only was I going to stop eating fish again, but I was going to stop consuming dairy. Um, so it, to be honest, you know, giving up the dairy took me a little bit of time, you know. Um, occasionally I would fall off the wagon and, you know, indulge in a slice of pizza or something because it was just so hard to resist. Um, but that was, you know, that was, it was back in the 1980s and in Japan and that's, and that's really when I started cooking, because yeah. I had to find I had to find foods that I enjoyed eating, um, and I started playing around with cashews then in the 1980s. Um, yeah, been making cashew cream for 30 years. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, what was the store? So you're hosting. Um, Miyoko's Kitchen Mixer, which is an exclusive B2B and kind of attendee hour at Friday's Bazaar on Friday, May 29th at the Marquesa. And you have your exclusive hour where you're hosting and showcasing some of your products. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what our attendees can expect? We're really, really excited to be doing that. I'll be there with um, our, um, our with Whitney, who handles our sales. And um, we're just really excited to get as many people as possible to taste our cheeses. Um, I know that a lot of people have already, but there are still so many people who've never heard about them, um, who still have trouble, you know, uh, hopefully everyone at Vita Vegan Con is vegan. Um, sometimes, you know, I've met people who aren't quite there yet, and those are the people I'm really, really targeting. But I want to get as many flavors into people's mouths as possible. I just want people to indulge and just have that sense of richness. Um, so I just I want to meet people, talk about cheese. Um, I that's about it. It's just an hour of gorging. <laughs> that's fantastic. Naomi, can we ask? Do you have any new flavors in development? Well, what we're doing right now is we're going to be having a cheese of the month. We're going to have a limited edition cheese. <laughs> we're going to be introducing every month. So you'll have you know this will just be online, and we've got um. A really special cheese coming out for May. Um, so we had one for, for, and we'll have a different one every single month. Um, we are working on, um, I have a Bloomy Rhine cheese that we're hoping to introduce later this year. Um, and um, we have some food service items that we're developing as well. We've had some requests from um, some large chains for food service items. So, um, you know, we're hoping that we'll be able to develop. We have a cool idea for a vegan mozzarella. Um, these will be probably in 2016. And we are going to be building another plant. The facility we have is about 5,000 square feet. And um, currently, that will probably be devoted to just the artisanal cheeses that we're creating now. But in 2016, we'll be building a much larger facility where we'll be manufacturing what I call the everyday line. Um, you know, things that will rival Rhea and, uh, you know, follow your heart. Sort of the everyday sort of cheeses, um, but slightly higher end than, the, you know, slightly 
more artisanal than those, but not lower price point than what we have now, but higher end than uh, some of the ones that are on the market. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah, We're, that sounds very exciting. We're looking forward to that. Um, so we are so excited to have you come to Austin. Have you been to Austin before? I have not. The only place I've been to in Texas is Marshall, Texas, and I've oh. been here two years in Boca Raton. Yeah. So I'm excited to go to Austin. Yeah, Austin's incredible. You know, we've been a few times uh, meeting with venues and um, working on some the logistics and. You probably know that we all love the tacos there. Is there one um, item or one place that you're really looking forward to eating at or to trying? No, I'm looking for suggestions, however. So, uh, yeah, please them. Them. <laughs> yeah. yes, please, please send them my way. I, I really haven't had time to research. Um, so, you know, I've. Uh, I gotta still book my flight. It's just been, you know, it's like, I can only think out like a week in advance or two yeah. days. Well, we can tell yeah. you we'll make it a little bit easier on you because we do have two entirely vegan taco food trucks pulling up outside the bazaar on Friday. So you'll just have to go there. <laughs> okay, that sounds great. Very incredible. Yeah. Um, you've been traveling a lot. Do you have a favorite go-to travel snack or travel? tip for vegans who are traveling a lot? You know, I am really, really bored um, in terms of traveling. So in terms of snacks for traveling, um, I usually just, you know, grab something, leftovers or something from home for my plane ride. And then um, I get, wherever I go, I just seek out, and I'm lucky enough, wherever I go, there seems to be plenty of vegan options. So I just, I try to get as many vegan establishments as I can. Um, when I was in Philadelphia last year, I had an afternoon, and within a like a four, a one mile radius, there were like five or six vegan establishments, and I went uh, from one to another and got something at each place. <laughs> I filled myself, you know. So that's kind of a, that's about the biggest tip I can give is get there and find as many vegan places to go to and just try them all. Um, I think and and so I, I typically don't pack a lot for myself because I want to be hungry when I get there so I can try everything. Um, I do know people that are very practical and they do things like they pack their oatmeal in a little container so that they can pour hot water in it in their hotel room and things like that. Um, I'd rather just wake up hungry um, and then be ravenous by the time I get to that vegan establishment. Do you have a favorite um, vegan establishment in any of the cities that you visited recently, international or national? Is there one that just keeps calling you back? I, I just went to Seattle and went to Plum Bistro for the second time, and I absolutely love Plum Bistro. Um, I just think – I love the hearty flavors, the sort of – it's like comfort food elevated. And it, I just thought it was – Everything I've had there has been delicious. So that's one of my favorite spots. Um, love veg, uh, of course. And then recently I had a, a vegan meal that was absolutely spectacular um, at um, a non-vegan restaurant called Atelier Kren in San Francisco, uh, mm -hmm. which is a Michelin-starred restaurant. And it was a $200 dinner per person. But it's a twenty. It's a twenty course meal. And how? Yeah, how twenty courses. Yes, twenty courses of molecular gastronomy. That would just blew my mind. That was absolutely yeah, that's incredible. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I mean, so definitely, you know, you should try that. I mean, it's just wonderful. That's one of those rare chefs that is more than happy to create an amazing vegan meal. And, you know, not make you feel like, you know, you're putting them out or, you know, it's like you're an afterthought. So that's yeah. an amazing thing. Um, I went to uh, Millennium again. Uh, they're closing, as you know, and they're moving right. across to Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah so. Maybe. Oh, right? No, they, they announced it's official. Oh, really? Oh, good. Okay. So Millennium is coming yeah. back then in a new Yeah, they're coming back. But, you know, one of the, uh, the things that I really, really like are these new pop-ups that are coming up. And uh, there's a couple of uh, chefs in the San, San Francisco Bay Area that I consider to be extremely talented. 
Shane and Marie of S and M Catering. Have you ever had their food? Uh -uh. They're no. one of their. Uh, they're trained chefs. So they went to um, uh, help, uh, whatever that natural gourmet. And they are extremely, extremely talented. And if you ever get to San Francisco, um, you should check out one of their. They usually have um, three or four pop-up dinners a month. Um, blow your mind. Extremely talented chefs. Wow, that sounds amazing. Um, I'm gonna bring it back to Austin and be a vegan for a second. So we, um, you know, we just got back from Austin. We're really excited for Vita Vegan Con, which is the last weekend of May. And we know that you came to the gala last year in 2013. Uh, what are you excited about for the conference this year as a speaker, as an attendee, as a visitor? I loved the conference last year. Um, you know, I, I thought I love the connections. I love it meeting all those people. I loved a lot of the uh, the uh, the speakers that I got to hear, and the uh, the gala was a lot of fun. I mean, it was just a great event. I I just love the opportunity to connect to see all these I don't know young people that are so excited. You know, it was sort of electrifying. Um, the energy in the room. Um, you guys put on a great event. Um, you are absolute pros at what you are doing. Uh, marketing geniuses. And um, <laughs> I learned a lot. You know, like, for example, I am absolutely the worst photographer in the world. I cannot, you know, food style for the, I don't have the patience for that. And I watched Hannah Kaminsky, you know, buy some, Cheapo salad at Whole Foods and turn it into a work of art. Uh, so just stuff like that. It, yeah. it was lots and lots of fun, um, and I'm really looking forward to sharing my experiences from the uh, you know the age of vegan dinosaurs with to, with all of you <laughs> young folks. So we're really excited yeah. to have you. Um, and one more exciting thing that you're doing is after Vita Vegan Con, you're doing a trip to Italy. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, I am so excited. Italy is one of my all-time favorite places. I've been there three or four times, and it's a place – the food of Italy is something that I highly uh, admire because it's a pure food. It's a clean food. A lot of food that is – masked by all these other you know, it's a very simple clear food where the ingredients speak for themselves and you don't have to mask it with all these sauces and 35 different ingredients to you know just make it taste like something and i love the honesty of that kind of cuisine and southern italy is an area where they have traditionally had a high proportion of plant-based dishes far more than northern italy so that's where we're going, the Amalfi Coast. It's a tour put on by uh, Green Earth Travel and Tierno Tours. And it's a vegan uh, tour. For, uh, there's four weeks, one week at a time. We'll be going along the Amalfi Coast and Pompeii. Um, we'll be making vegan pizza. We'll have cooking classes. But it'll be an eating journey. It'll be, you know, basically, we'll be eating throughout the day uh, the most amazing vegan food in the most, in, in absolutely paradise. So I'm really hoping that many people can come with us. I think uh, I'll be on tour the fourth week from July 18th to the 25th with Matt Frazier, who is a no meat athlete. So if you overeat, you can always go on a run with him. Um, and it'll be amazing. Um, so if you're interested, you should check out Vegano Italiano Festival. You can find it on Facebook or just Google it. And uh, please come and join us. Um, the other four weeks, the other three weeks, there are other hosts on it. Uh, our hen house is one week. Uh, Fran Costigan is another week. Um, so there's lots of great people you can get to know. Um, and uh, we'll be with you, you know, the entire time. So please come. Are you guys still there? You're frozen. There you go. That's on. Yeah. Um. So it sounds like you've got a great few months coming up next. Thank you so much for making Vita Vegan Con a part of that. Is there anything else that you would like to say or ask us about Vita Vegan Con? Uh, so it, you made it. Is this a? It's now a three and a half day event. It sounds like so you've expanded it even more. Wasn't it just two and a half days last time? 
It was like Friday. It was three days last week. We had, yeah, yeah, we had Friday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. And then this time, Saturday and Sunday are the two main um, there are two main days at the AT&T Executive Conference Center, so those days are just full of classes. And um, this year we took, we made a difference. We took out all the exhibitors and vendors from the Saturday and Sunday, and we moved that to the Friday event. So now people can come in, really have time to meet and talk with the vendor, vendors and exhibitors. Uh, we also have panels going on that day, so it's still a three-day event, but we've um, separated out a little bit. And now the bazaar is also open to the public which is something that we had a lot of requests for, that people who maybe don't want to come or can't come to the whole conference can still come, meet all these amazing vegan companies, see some of our speakers. Um, so it's three days, and it's really an amazing, incredible opportunity. You can buy a ticket to just Friday, or you can buy a ticket to all three days. That's fantastic. How many people are you expecting on Friday, do you know, for the bazaar? I think a lot. You know, our capacity at the venue is 500. We're expecting mm -hmm. that there'll be... I would say probably six or seven hundred total all day throughout the day, coming in and coming out. That's the public, exciting. We are buying tickets. Yeah, it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> well, I am thrilled to have you know to be able to participate. We're thrilled to be hosting the uh, the Miyoko's mixer and and getting cheese into everyone's mouths. Um, and thank you for having me. Of course, thank you. Thank so you. Much. We love you. We love what you're doing. It's so inspiring. And thank you for joining us here today on the Google Hangout. Oh, thanks for having me. So Miyoko, can you remind everyone where they can find you online? Yeah, miyokoskitchen.com, M-I-Y-O-K-O-S kitchen.com. And you can order, we'll ship directly to you. We're also now shipping to Hawaii and Alaska. So we'll Ooh, be making an announcement wow. about that. Um, and we're hoping to get into a Whole Foods near you soon. We're on the West Coast now um, in uh, natural food stores, and we're just creeping up to the Pacific Northwest. Um, Can't wait. And, uh, yeah, so we're, you know, if you're interested in having our product in a store near you, please tell your local store, you know, say, hey, why don't you carry Miyoko's Kitchen? Because um, that will definitely help. Um, That's get fantastic. us into <laughs> distribution with UNFI, so we need that distribution to be able to get it to a store near you, so anyway. Oh, um, yay! Well, so thanks a lot. So thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. And Bye. Anya said, hey. Here's Anya. Hi, Anya. Hi.